All right, guys, the issue at hand today is my air compressor that I mentioned in previous videos is doing some weird stuff uh, running off this generator. This generator should run it without a problem. Um, and I also had another generator I used to run it off of. And something happened when I tried to uh, convert the wiring over to 220. Uh, I don't know if I made a mistake or just what happened, but during the mix of it all and trying to get it to run off of a, another generator that I had, I ended up getting a p puff of smoke out of this electric motor and uh, I can't imagine that was good. So I put the wiring back to 120 and um, I've been using it for four or five months that way at the house. Um, and then it started tripping the breaker um, at the house. So I ended up changing out um, both of these uh, capacitors. One's a start capacitor and one's a run capacitor. And uh, that didn't make any change. So what's happening is if the tank is empty and there's no pressure in it, you know, basically no preload on the motor, um, you know, the, the pump, um, it will start up and, and it'll build up pressure right up to where it should. Um, but once there's pressure in the tank, which there's still some pressure in there now, so I, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm assuming it's not going to work. Um, I'm going to turn it on and show you what it does. Uh, it basically just turns really, really slow. I'm imagining if I leave it for a little bit, it'll probably pop the breaker or whatever in the um, generator, but it's showing on the screen on the generator, it's drawing 50 amps, which it should not do. Um, so I'm assuming that the, uh, the motor is toast. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you what it does now. We're gonna go ahead and change that motor over and uh, then we'll try it afterwards and hopefully we fix it. Let me fire up this generator and I'll show you what we, what we got here and what it's doing. Okay, so we're up and running on the generator and I'll go ahead and fire this up and you'll see uh, what it does. As you can see, it just doesn't... Uh, it won't get up to speed and when I'm doing that, if I look at the... Uh, you can change this menu to show the amps. And uh, it's drawing 50 amps. It's drawing 50 amps when it's trying to get started like that, uh, which may or may not be. I'm sure it's supposed to draw a good amount of amps when it starts up, but that's what the capacitor is supposed to be for, is to store that little bit of extra energy to get the motor turning at the beginning. And uh, that's why I thought that might have been the problem, but um, I changed that out and it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't mean that it wasn't the problem and maybe the wire where it where it's connected in is is melted or broken or what i don't know i'm not going to get into it it was i think 140 dollars for a new motor um so i'm hoping that's going to take care of it like i said i i painted quite a few vehicles with this inside like the spray booth area and i i ran it i think uh you know just the overspray and stuff has just gotten you can see where it's sucked into the motor and uh, between that and me fiddling around with the wires, I think I've definitely burnt out a coil or something in this motor, so it just doesn't have the oomph that it should have. So let's put this on and hopefully it'll work out. Didn't have to take this whole thing off. This has two pieces, obviously. It's got these little uh, clips you just turn. Interesting. metric hardware I thought it was standard Right. Just that one 
Vamos a probar. Ah. Well, that was a waste of time. Just slides right off. Keyway. The new motor came with another key, so set that aside. All right. I'm gonna compare the wires on this to the uh, the new motor. I don't think it's exactly the same. So I'm gonna have to do a little research here and figure out what goes where. Always a good idea to take a picture how things are or were. Here's the old one. Everything is pretty much different. So we know our ground wire needs to go here. And we've got one, two, three options for these two wires. And there are numbers there and there is a chart on the motor but we got low voltage or high voltage low voltage being the 120 high voltage being 220 um, not sure if that makes any sense to you guys but it seems a little confusing got one two three and four however This says one down here, two up here, three, and four. There's also number five, but I'm assuming that's where that hole is, so there's no fifth one. So according to this, number one is down here with an orange on it. Line number one has an orange. So that's line one. Which I guess on AC it doesn't matter. I believe if I do black or, or, or neutral, either way it's going to feed it power, I believe. And then we got line two goes on number three. Which number three would be up here according to this for the low voltage the brown and white goes together on pin four and pin four has the brown and white so it's came set up for 120 and if the white and orange was on number four although it's this one up to here Having the white and orange on the same one, that would be for 240. So it's set up properly for what I'm trying to do. And just line one and line two. So that's got to be what we need to do. What I'm going to do is see uh, 
on the other motor, the top one, if that was the black or the white. Like I said, I don't think it matters on the AC current on a motor. All right, YouTube to the rescue. So I wanted to verify that I'm connecting this properly. I found this video, single phase electric motor wiring tutorial. I want to give this guy credit for helping me out. Uh, Compressor Source TV. Gonna go ahead and subscribe to him for his uh, wonderful information. And uh, just play this couple of seconds here and uh, show L1 you what he says. Getting connected to this. So L1 and L2 is either your white or black wire. On a on single phase. 110 or 220 volt the white or black getting switched around is not going to change anything in with your motor as far as the rotation or how it functions so you can select one of these as l1 um, which on this diagram shows the connecting to the t so as you see there my suspicion is confirmed it doesn't matter which one goes where so let's go uh we had Line one goes to the orange, so down here, which is this connector here. So we'll put the black there since it's kind of already living in that area. Okay, and then line two. So let me show you what I'm looking at here. Um, the orange is connected to one on the, for the low voltage, which is 120. Orange is connected to stud one with line one. And that's stud one with orange connected to it and black now connected to the same one. And then the line two needs to be connected to uh, pin three, which has no other wire connected to it. So it must be internally connected to something. And three is right up here, number three. So we'll pop this puppy right on, right on there. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, tuck this wire in, like so, and put the cover on. We'll figure out how it goes this way. That way, there we go. Okay, back you up a little bit there so I don't stick the screwdriver in your face again. Alrighty. Okay, what I'm gonna do is Put a couple of bolts on and uh, fire up the motor by itself without the uh, belt on and just uh, make sure that it's working properly. Just snug two bolts down so it's stationary. And now uh, let's go ahead and fire up and see if we get any smoke. All right, she's plugged in, let's give her hell. She's running nice and quiet. All right, so far so good. Let's hook up that belt and see what we got.
Mientras. put the guard back on let's see if she uh, fires up now I've also got all these lights running off of the compressor so let me uh, take any unnecessarily unnecessary loads off of it switch us back to solar Okay. Now also I'm running this off an extension cord to the compressor, which I really shouldn't do. I mean to the uh, generator. And when I tested it earlier, I had it connected directly right up to the uh, generator or yeah generator, not through this extension cord. So um, this might add a little slight draw to it as well, but I'm gonna try worst case scenario and see if it works with the through the extension cord. We're certainly uh, better off than we were being connected directly up to it. So let's see what we get. No go. Ain't that a bitch. I figured out the problem. There we go. That's much better. You saw nothing. You heard nothing. I never want to hear about this again. That's the same compressor that I just fixed. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> 